Hey guys, this is Trevor. Thought I'd uh, do a quick video explaining to you a little more detail how I use the 310 oscillator in my trading. I've had a lot of people ask me in the past about it, and I don't think I went into very much detail uh, on the webinar that I did. So I thought I'd do one really quick. Uh, so if anyone else has any questions, I can just refer them to it. Um, it's a great tool. However, be careful um, because uh, when you first see it, it looks like it works perfectly on every trade, and uh, it doesn't. So you need to make sure you have context um, or a lot of background going for you before you take a trade. But if you do, it's an excellent way of just timing your entries. And that's mainly what I use it for. I, I kind of know I want to go short or long on market. And I'll use the, the 310 just to give me a good reason to do it. It also gives me a very objective entry point as well. So um, that you know, I don't have to sit there and, and think about it too much. I just pretty much pull the trigger once I know what I want to do <clears throat> for a particular day. So uh, let me give you a very quick overview of, of how it works. Um, you have the 310 oscillator and then a 16 period moving average of that oscillator. Um, the 16 period moving average is basically what the 310 would look like on a faster or on a slower time frame. So it's exactly how it would look on probably the 24,000 tick chart. So it basically tells you what the trend is. If it's below zero, the trend is um, going down. If it's above zero, the trend is going up. Then what you look for is you look for the 310 oscillator to go above zero or below zero to give you a, a good idea of when to get short on a pullback. So for instance, here, 310 is, or the 16 is below zero. The 310 goes above zero here. So it is telling you that we are reverting away from the mean of the trend and it's probably a, a good spot to go short. Um, same would go in reverse for a long, as you can see here. Uh, 16 period moving average is going up. Uh, 310 pulls below zero. So you look to go long uh, somewhere uh, in, during this pullback. Now for a trigger, what I look for is I look for one of two things. I look for the 310 to turn down for the first time. So you see it's going up here, up here, up here, and finally turns down there. So that would be a spot to go sh short, which would put you short on this bar right here. However, um, I like to, to use the uh, other method, which is a key reversal bar, which is where the bar, in this case, the downside, its high is greater than the previous bar, yet we close in the middle to the bottom end of the range. And I actually program my, um, my uh, indicator to paint the bar red for short, uh, green for a long. Here again, you have um, a key reversal bar dips below the low of the previous bar and closes to the, on the higher end of the range. We get two of them in a row. That's usually a double whammy for me. Here we have the uh, 310 actually turning up the same time you get a key reversal bar. It's even better. Um, so that's what I look for for the actual trigger. Uh, now, one uh, nuance to think about on this is when you uh, sometimes, you know, you might get, get in a little early. Uh, and how do you avoid that? For instance, here, uh, we have a 16 period average is, is below zero. The 310 goes above zero. It turns down here, you get short, boom, you get stopped out. What would make this, what would make you want to wait uh, on this particular trade? What I've noticed is when the 16 period average starts to turn up, odds are you're gonna have a more complex rally. Uh, or to be more specific, an ABC pattern. So here's A, B, and C right here. So today I did not go short on this bar, even though it was technically a signal to go short, because I knew, first of all, it was quite a move down, uh, and then the 16 really started moving up here. So I'm in I was anticipating a more complex correction, an ABC, which we got here. So I shorted on this key reversal bar, end up scratching the trade, but you get the point. Um, if you think about it, it makes sense. Generally, in Elliott wave, there's um, two uh, corrective waves. You have a wave two 
in wave four. And generally, uh, one of the two is going to be more complex. It's the law of alteration. So if, if the wave two is complex, four will be simple and vice versa. Generally, four is the more complex correction. Uh, and this is definitely an impulse wave of some sort. I would think this is probably a wave three. So it makes sense that you, the, the wave four correction would be a little more complex and it made sense to wait for it. Um, so that, that's one nuance to look for. Um, and as you can see, when the uh, 16 is moving down or up in your direction, um, it's a good, it, it, you don't need, it, you know, you, you have a, you want to jump on board. So for instance here, got the 310 goes above zero. Look at the 16, it doesn't even barely budge to the upside. So this one, I wouldn't wait for a complex correction. This is a pretty simple one. I mean, I guess there's a little bit of an ABC pattern there, but um, it, you know, it, it's still, I mean, the first signal you get is a key reversal bar here. Um, and then you get a uh, the actual oscillator turning down on this bar. So. You know, in this instance, you you wouldn't you wouldn't wait for a more complex correction. Um, and same thing here. You can see the 16. Look how far down we move on this move. But the 16 period moving average barely budges. Uh, though this is you can see a little bit of an A, B, and C pattern here. Uh, in this instance, though, you wouldn't really need to wait. Same here. Uh, 16 period moving moving average is moving up fairly strong. You can go along on this bar right here. Uh, with, with some good confidence that it's probably not, it's going to be a good spot. Um, now, as far as context, you really want to use it in context. It's the best time to use it. For instance, what I mean is, you know, here's a typical sequence for a change in the trend. You have an oversold condition and a trend channel. You violate the trend channel here. You can see this would be considered a change of behavior. You have strong demand. Uh, second highest up, uh, uh, second highest demand we've had on an up wave since this move began on the previous day down. Uh, we actually kind of go below previous day's low, move above it. We dip a little bit below it here, but uh, still we're, 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 uh, we could not stay below this level very easily, and we actually moved up fairly quickly here. So uh, in this instance, you know, this is a very good reason to take the 310 oscillator along here. Um, same thing goes on this trade. You know, this is more based on structure. We have a support level. We break through with ease of movement. We're moving away from resistance, so that's a good spot to go short. Uh, I also like to look at. I don't necessarily need a structural area or a big story like this. Sometimes, if we're just at a major resistance level and we start to turn uh, move away from it, uh, it's a good reason to look for a 310 oscillator short, maybe on the faster time frame. You know, for instance. Here we reject this level here. There's there's probably a 310 oscillator short in this area. It's a good reason to take one because we're moving away from it, from it on this time frame. We have uh, the EMA is moving down fairly strong. So that's the, that's how, how I'm using it. I'll try to talk more about it in every video. I, I, I probably enter on a 310 oscillator most of the time. Um, and second in line would be a spring or an up thrust. So I'll try to give some more examples for you guys so um, you, uh, you know you get a little bit more idea of, of how I'm using it and the nuances I look for. Anyways, I hope that's useful for you guys. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to post anything on, the, on, the, uh, on my uh, uh, journal.